what's going on you guys it's been a while since i've been in the c55 i know you guys have missed the c55 content so it's time to do those spark plugs we've been talking about also coming up soon within the next week or so i have some big changes to this car um they might not be met with as much enthusiasm as i have for them but that's why it's my car and uh hopefully you guys enjoy it and you understand why i do the things that I'm going to do. Um, I'm really excited about it. I've been contemplating the idea of doing it for a long time, uh, and I'm finally gonna just try it out and see how it how it works. Um, I'm gonna keep what I'm taking away uh, and have it, you know, able to be retrofitted if I don't end up liking what I do. But um, I think it'll turn out cool, and uh, I think it'll make a. a nice difference uh, according to you know some people I have for research and things I've heard so uh, we're gonna try it out I think it'll look pretty dope and uh, yeah so let's get into it all right made it to the garage gotta let the engine cool down for a while before I'm even gonna attempt to start this job and after we finish man I think I need to give this thing a wash this thing is filthy right now the dirtiest I've ever seen it this pollen has wreaked havoc this uh, spring on both cars and right here by the way is one of the modifications that I'm gonna do this is not built for this car but I think it's gonna fit so let's open it up and see what it looks like all right so in here you got the front lip now obviously I know this is gonna require some modification but I went based off of the size of the front bumper um, width wise and just kind of eyeballing at what I saw online this is actually made for a uh, like 2015 year, I don't know the, the run years for the Subarus, but for that era of the WRXs. I'm excited to try this thing out. I'm gonna do some uh, kind of modifications, or fixes rather, to the bumper itself first, because you guys can see, I have a crack there, and I have a crack all the way going up there. Now, I've already ordered the supplies to redo this. I basically bought the Brilliant Silver 744 spray paint. Um, I have some clear coat and some, some uh, primer. And I'm basically gonna do a plastic weld and uh, some filler and get it all nice and good, strong again. And then I'll respray it. Um, and after that, uh, I will start to uh, install the front lip. This will probably be maybe next week because I have to wait for those supplies to get here. So the way that happened was kind of unavoidable. Um, it did have a small crack where that zip tie is on the uh, passenger side, which it wasn't noticeable at all, so it never bothered me. But um, it snowed, the tires got cold, so obviously air got let out, and you know tires got a little bit lower than normal. When I went to back the car out, you know I didn't expect it to be sitting on that curb, um, and it just grabbed onto that just enough to create that that. Uh, second tear in the bumper and make the original one worse so i'm also one of the changes i was talking about i'm swapping these out i did a long hunt for what material i wanted to use i wanted a specific look i'm trying to get inspiration from other cars that i like uh, and pieces i like from them so i found some uh, mesh material that you guys will be surprised what it actually is when i make the video but um I'm gonna make it work for the bumper and I think it will look super clean. All right, so a little preview. We definitely have more than enough material to work with. Just a little added protection and should look pretty cool too if I do it right, so yeah. All right, so it's still not cool enough to work all the way, but I'm getting started. Uh, first thing you wanna do is unclip all of the uh, individual coil pack inserts. Um, many times these are gonna have like broken tabs of them but uh, if not, they just have a li like a little press back tab and you just pull them straight up, come off pretty easy. And then the next thing you're gonna do is use a T30 and get the uh, little bolts out on each one of them. And then we'll go from there afterwards. All right, so we got one side of the coil packs off. Let me explain how you do it. Um, I have the Mercedes tool. Now, if you have some type of uh, plug puller wrench or something, uh, there's other ways people make it work, but I got this when I was first starting out, so um, basically on each one of these plugs, at the end, 
and by all means please make sure you get the metal casing plugs don't go for the cheap plugs that have the rubber ones because they'll just tear and shred apart like even these ones i'm gonna have to f try to fix these because even these ones the rubber boot kind of got stuck and it's slipping out so i'm gonna have to try to see if i can finagle those back together but um yeah we tried when i first got this car and i did the spark plugs um it had the rubber style ends on them and we literally just like we're trying to pull them off and just ripped them to shreds so um yeah you basically fit this into here and then just use leverage to kind of wiggle i just kind of wiggle back and forth and they'll eventually just kind of pop out i'll try to show you guys one over on this side so hard to see down there but you want to try to get the wrench around it uh i usually try to twist it a little bit this one's not twisting so let's just try to pop it out there we go all right so there's all the coil packs out a pretty quick job um, besides those ones that were getting stuck for some reason let's uh, continue on um show you the engine bay with everything out a little more room to work with getting down there for the spark plugs let me see spark plug holes um so two per cylinder remember so you need 16 plugs and uh i am changing out to uh, NGK uh, BKR6ES-11. These are standard, um, uh, what is it, nickel, nickel alloy or AKA people call them copper plugs, just standard plugs. Um, no V power or anything, just standard. Um, I'm very curious. I want to see how they run. And, uh, you know, even if they only have a 20,000 mile interval, um, that's like two years of driving for me. So um, I have no problem doing this job a couple times. Uh, every couple of years or so so um yeah the other thing that i want to make sure that i didn't do last time um and that's probably the reason why like some of these are getting stuck on so bad is i want to make sure to use some uh de-electric grease um on the tips of the plugs and in the rubber boot um it won't hurt anything and it will definitely make the job a lot easier um or at least you know keep them from getting stuck like those ones did in the front um in future so all right now as for taking the spark plugs out i'm just using a standard uh spark plug socket i'll show you what guys want to take it out but um you'll just have to use various extensions uh throughout uh shorter or longer depending on what uh spot you're at and then i like to use you know the kind of swivel head um or wobbling, I don't know what you call those, wobbling head uh, socket attachments. Just makes it easier. Got one plug out. Um, now, if you guys remember, the worry was that there was a potential that these were counterfeit plugs um, based off some of the Amazon reviews. So I'll have to go back and double check what the Bosch standards are for their plugs. They look okay. These are a bit fouled up, as you can see. Um, not terrible, but yeah. Get a little bonus clip for you guys. The old 44 Ford running. Has a 302 50 Mustang engine. He's just starting it up, warming it. Uh, other recommendation, I don't know if you guys have changed spark plugs before. It's always good once you kind of pop them loose. I always unthread them by hand and thread them in by hand when I'm starting them. So something to keep in mind. All right, so half the plugs are out. Um, to be honest, I mean, they don't look too bad. Focus. Doesn't want to focus right now. There we go. I mean, they're pretty fouled up. Um, now, this is probably more the motor's fault. Um, <laughs> it's not the plug's fault. But I guess this is just more so like an act of paranoia. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I want to change them out anyway, so it's fine, but, you know, I just didn't trust after seeing those reviews on the Amazon seller um, that these were legit. Now, it may have been completely false, but I don't know, I'll hang on to them just in case. The other thing is, this job is really not that hard. Um, I, I, To be honest, I kind of wanted to avoid it for a while, just off of the memory of the first time I did it. And I think the first time, if you're doing it the first time, maybe it's going to be difficult for you. Mine was just because of that wire, plug wire experience. Um, if it had had good plug wires on it, then it probably wouldn't have been that bad. 
but uh, just having that experience and memory in mind, I was like, oh man, I don't want to mess with this. But uh, honestly, this was super easy. Um, it literally took me maybe 15 minutes, like for this side, and I'm taking my time. Um, and the driver's side is a little more difficult, so maybe I'll give myself like 20 minutes, but um, I think for sure if you're beginning, under an hour you should be able to get this done. Uh, if you're experienced and you're trying to be time efficient for whatever reason, uh, under 30 minutes, and if you're like Alex from Legit Streetcars and that dude from the dealership that he talked about, could do it in under 15 minutes. So I don't think I'm gonna try to push to that level. Um, I might make mistakes, but try to go that fast, so. Um, yeah, and I don't need to, so. All right, both sides are done. There's all the old plugs out. Here's the various extensions I used. Just like Legos, kind of got a piece together, which ones uh, work. And then the really only difficult ones are like the back ones on each side, and they're not hard. You just have to usually leave the spark plug socket and take off the extension and then uh, pull this out by itself with the plug in it. So yeah, just using a regular standard spark plug socket, 5 eighths. Um, some people say you have to use the thin walled ones. I don't know if this is a thin walled one, but this is one we happen to have. So this works from uh, Power Torque. All right, I got the uh, old spark plugs all bagged up, washed my hands. And the next thing I'm gonna do to make this job easier the next time I do it is put a little bit of uh, the electric grease on the um, top of the spark plug. And then I'm just gonna use this to kind of feed it into each one of the rubber boots and kind of lube them up. So just easier to get them on um, afterwards. So I'll show you in a second. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit, oh, it was just focused, no, it's not. Uh, put a little bit on the end there. This thing's having trouble focusing, but uh, and then I'm just gonna slide it into each one of the boots and just kind of swirl it around, make sure the boots are greased on the inside. You do not want to put, or at least I've been told, you do not want to put any uh, anti-seize on the threads on Mercedes engines. I guess they're particular about it. Some people still do it, but uh, I don't. So do what you like. All right, so what I'm doing now is just reverse order. Um, I usually just use the spark plug socket and extension. Just uh, get them uh, tight by hand, and then I'll go back through and uh, torque them down. I didn't use a torque wrench last time we did it. I just you just go until you kind of feel the washer crush. So I do it by feel. Uh, I don't know what the exact torque settings are that they want, but there's not really that much room to get the torque wrench in here. So um, I just do it by feel. So. Alright, everything is all buttoned back up, secured. Uh, the one thing that you really got to pay attention to when you're putting back your wires, depending on what brand you get, these are Bremi wires, um, but you really have to kind of force them in there to click them on. Um, some of them you have enough room to kind of wiggle them and they'll go on a lot easier, but like the back ones are a pain in the butt to really get to click on actually, and they, they have to click on all the way. Um, the first time I did this actually, we changed all of them and we thought that we were clicking them on and went out for a test drive and the car was like dying intermittently and we didn't know what was going on. And then we realized that we didn't even, you know, we weren't even on the plugs all the way. We didn't click them on at all. So uh, don't do the same thing I did. So yeah, make sure they're clicked on. You'll hear it or you'll feel it and then you'll feel it when you, when you test them to try to pull them off. Uh, you won't be able to pull them off just by hand pretty easy. So yeah that's a tip for you guys let me put everything back up uh together and then i will start it up all right first start up now
nothing unusual this far besides that uh, noisy secondary air pump. It's already it's already back with a vengeance. All right, guys. First cold start since changing over to the standard plugs. Starts right up. So I know some people were a bit worried about um, that as one of the issues. People thought that startup was a little slower with standard plugs or that was the rumor. One of the rumors I would see online um, for going to standard plugs from uh, one of the precious metal plugs, but uh, not the experience so far. Um, proof right there. Um, so yeah, I plan on trying to drive this uh, throughout the week. Um, since we're a stay at home, I, I don't know. I don't just want to just go drive with no excuse or whatever. Um, but when I have to go somewhere, I have to do something. I definitely want to take the car out and um, just kind of get a better feel for it as I go. And uh, kind of see what everything is like after a week or so. Um, and then I'll update you guys.